much and welcome all. Great to see so many here attending this session. And first of all, I wanted to, because <clears throat> we are not standing alone. We are, uh, we are an island, but we are not alone. So, and I just wanted to have another round of applause to this great deep dive for Iceland, because I, when we're doing it and taking it all together, it's something we should already maybe have or something, but having these outside resources and outside eyes looking into it is so valuable for us. So one extra applause for this work. <laughs> But I couldn't resist to put this <laughs> up here because we have been talking about the importance of trust and social cohesion and so on. And this is, is Iceland equal well-being society? Of course, we have indication of we are doing many things well, but also <laughs> challenges. But this comes from the Facebook group Residents in Altanes. And it says, good morning, found these keys on the walking path to Altanes on Altanes Road. It can be accessed on Bessastaðir or can, can, you can call following numbers. Enjoy the day. <laughs> and maybe for Icelanders, they know who this is. It, it's our president, Guðni Tjáu Johannesson. It's probably from his morning run. <laughs> and this is one of the assets, uh, very important resources Iceland have, I think. So. Uh, well, I, in my title, it's called, uh, I mentioned policy jungle at the national level and international level, but it's understandable. If you go to Wiki how, how to start your own country, <laughs> there's a lot <laughs> you need to do, <laughs> but please don't, uh, usually we use better resources than that. But uh, here you can see, if you go to the government uh, site, all the topics that the, the main topics the government is working with. And here you can see economic affairs and public finances. Here you have uh, life and health and natural resources. This is something we have been talking about. Then here you have human resources. And the understanding of human resources is those who are working, you know, have an official job within the government. But I wonder, and it has been talked about earlier here before, if it would use view humans as a resource overall. And for example, then health is of course a key element in that. To preserve that resource and embrace it and ensure well-being. Uh, <clears throat> but how do we go from policies at national level to action that matter at the local level. This has all been discussed here before. We have a climate, uh, all kinds of challenges regarding climate change, the need to mitigate and adapt, uh, migration, demographic changes, artificial intelligence, mental health challenges, human resources. And how uh, do we turn it all into coordinated actions toward common goals? <clears throat> it's not an easy task, as you have heard. And so it's, I think, uh, the sustainable development goal came as a godsend, because they are a great opportunity to coordinate and have a common vision. And uh, of course, as you have heard about, we have those indicators for well-being. And what we are uh, doing with the health promoting community work is that we are contributing to this journey. And we have, our, uh, for example, contributing the public health indicators. And by working towards the sustainable development goals, we know that we achieve, for example, the, uh, what we are focusing on mainly health and well being. Uh, Dina already <coughs> showed this one. Uh, the health promoting community and related work is a result of, as we say, ongoing fusion cooking. We are not, we are an island, but we are not standing alone. And the basis comes from the Ottawa Charter and personally uh, from the flagship course on equity in health and all policies by the WSO was a very example of very valuable uh, uh, capacity building 
uh, course. Rainbow model, who healthy cities, what they are doing, various EU projects, and of course we learn a lot in close collaboration with other Nordic countries, Europe and others. And <clears throat> we have a solid foundation for the health promoting community and other health promotion and prevention work. Both in the Directorate of Health Act, where said that good and health and well-being with health promotion and prevention work and accessible and safe healthcare services based on best available knowledge and experience. And we know that this is the, the way to this is comprehensive approach. And of course, as I, I mentioned already, and it's been talked about a lot, the sustainable development goals. You've heard about the policies have already been mentioned, the health and public health policies. And very valuable is our uh, close collaboration with the Association of Local Authorities. And for example, in their strategy 22 to 26, it says the association continues to collaborate with the Directorate of Health in the implementation of health promotion work and the public health policy. And of course, many other policies and plans. And in the government physical strategy plan, 2024 to 28, one of the goals uh, indicators there is the percent of population living in a health promoting community, municipality. And you can see the target for 24 is 95% and 28, 96%. And we are very happy that we have already achieved that. But of course, it's not enough that they part the participate. It's not the quantity, like with the economic growth, it's the quality. And that's, of course, it's valuable to make this connection and it's an opportunity. But of course, in the end, it's the quality of the work that matters. The main aim of the health promoting community work and the health promotion work we are doing is to support communities with the emphasis of support. It's their work to work in a systematic, data-driven way to create an environment and conditions that promote healthy behavior and lifestyle, health and well-being for all. And, and that means allow get funding and other resources to actions that matter for well-being. And we had had a lot of discussion about that. And the first health promoting communities uh, signed contracts in 2013 was the city of Reykjavik and Mosenspeich. The guiding principles are active participation of all stakeholders across sectors and levels, so in line with what has already been discussed here, that the work is based on best knowledge and experience and do no harm. And this can be a challenge because sometimes life happens and it's ahead of the evidence. And of course, equity, both with universal measures and also additional efforts to meet the needs of vulnerable groups, sustainability with long-term approach, and as has been discussed here earlier, create structures and processes that survive changes in local governments. And what actions matter for health and well-being? Uh, as have been said here before, health and well-being of people and the planet, planet is a result of complex interaction between individuals and their environment and conditions. That's why we decided to take the Dahlgren and White Hat Rainbow and adapt it to Icelandic context. It's a very complex web and we feel we come with this huge element to the table at the municipalities and it can be a lot. So we are trying to help them cut it down. And we adapted it to Icelandic context, so there are many things there that may be, uh, some things there that may be not in other places, but also regarding priority SDGs, like responsible consumption, and put greener spin on it. And what we've done is that we created checklists, so what needs to be in place if we want to uh, promote physical activity and outdoor recreation, what needs to be in place if you want to promote mental health, uh, healthy diets, and so on. And, and the uh, red bow, this huge social determinants of health, that's the one checklist, the cornerstones of health. So we are looking at the big picture, the, the, those cornerstones of health in the communities, 
So uh, put I on it, but then also the, all the other things. And all those we have had this high level steering group and consultation platform. During COVID, we were a little bit busy, <laughs> but we are picking up the pace again. But all of those uh, uh, stakeholders reviewed those checklists and helped us to uh, create this. And then we have this web-based platform to uh, help them monitor the work and review the work. And just as a short example, one of the seven checklists, Healthy Diet, uh, it has uh, six main goals, this checklist. And here you can see the status. Blue is the baseline and green is the current status. And just as an example, I'm going to take uh, main goal five. It has six criteria, And uh, the municipality makes it easy. One of the criteria is that the municipality makes it easy for inhabitants to sort and dispose of waste from food in an environmentally friendly way. And one is nothing implemented and five is fully implemented. And 30 municipalities have rated their status on this and the average is three. So some two or five, and one or two are doing very little or nothing and some are at least doing something. And here is the link to uh, uh, example to link under the sustainable goal number 11. So, as we have heard, there are no new news here. Human and planet health is inseparable. And what we're doing is try to do our best to contribute to common journey towards a sustainable society. Thank you. Mm -hmm.